Alhamdulillah, um, a few years ago I used to write some spoken word poetry and, and used to perform it up and down the country. But life takes over, as you know. But the brothers they asked so kindly, and uh, inshallah, that's what I'll be doing today, inshallah. Bismillah. Don't spend all your life collecting this world's treasures. Death awaits us all, the destroyer of all pleasures. Every soul shall taste the bitterness of death, so prepare for the day when all your deeds are measured. You will die the way you lived and you'll be raised the way you die, wherever you may be, whether you're in fortresses up high. Perfectly on cue, right at its appointed time, they say that death is the only truth and this life is but a lie. And that time will come too when your loved ones will cry. Voice is trembling as they inform your relatives late at night. So sad you had to go, you were such a nice guy, they said it wasn't your time, but that's not up to you and I. People will gather at your home when they hear the news of the calamity. Standard formality expressing their condolences to your family. The movement of time is nothing more than an erosion of existence in this dunya. So fulfill your faraid, renew your intentions and hold on to the Prophet Sunnah because time waits for no man. So why should it wait for you? You thought life was just a game until death decided to make his move. You were given chance after chance, but now it's too late for you. You'd procrastinate to prostrate to the one that created you. You see, time is killing us while we think we're killing time. The place where you'll be buried has already been assigned. We deal with death like it's doubtful when the promise is divine. Will you be satisfied when you're lying in a space that's confined? Uthman ibn Affan would cry every time he'd see the grave, the possessor of two lights. May Allah be pleased with his slave. He'd say that the grave is the very first step into the Akhirah. Who is successful in the Qabr will be successful all the way. But these days, we just laugh and joke in the cemetery. Brothers don't even visit thinking this unnecessary. Brother, don't forget that even your life is temporary. Don't live your life like death is not in your vocabulary. Others use the term death defined, but nobody's ever defied death. With every step that you take, you're getting closer to your last breath. The cries of the Sahaba, they would drown the sound of the khutbah every time that death was mentioned. Now our own loved ones pass away and we show no apprehension. Tomorrow's not guaranteed, but you're still worried about your pension. You were too busy with this world. Gave the hereafter no attention. Don't build a life in this dunya by destroying your akhirah. Read and take heed from Surah Al-Waqiyah. This life's a test. You can't retake or restart it. The clock which will make your shroud may have already hit the market. Oh, son of Adam, you're only a number of days and whenever a day passes, part of you passes away. You're a traveler in this world. You're not here to stay. So prepare for the day when your own limbs will have their say. You will regret every moment that you chose to disobey. Imagine standing before Allah while your deeds are being weighed. When people gave you advice, you didn't give them the time of day. You said you'd practice when you're older, but it didn't go your way. So we Raid you, we laid you to rest right side face in the Kaaba. I just pray the last words on your lips was the Shahada. Friends and family turn up to pray your Janazah. If anyone could escape death, it would have been the Prophets and Sahaba. Hear the footsteps of your friends as they walk away from your Qabr. Your family is in pieces. May Allah grant them sabr. No, should have, would have, could have. Now you can't blame it on Qadr. Spoke as if you fought at Badr, but you didn't get up to pray Fajr. Shaitan may have whispered in your ear, but it was still your own decision. Now you're wishing you spent your whole life in a state of submission. Two angels appear, ask you three questions. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who was your prophet? I pray you state the right answers. Love for this world is a disease. It's a sickness worse than cancer, because if you dislike to meet Allah, Allah dislikes to meet you. Remember, there's an open enemy that tries to defeat you. Yes, Shaitan won't leave you alone. He'll try and misguide you to the end. If you're losing the battle to him now, then tell me, what will you do then? Once the angel of death takes your soul, it will be too late to repent. It's advice to myself first and foremost. We all need to make amends. Don't want your soul to leave your body like a thorn branch ripping through wet wool. The world is small, our desires are large. The dirt will ensure we're finally full. Angels with dark faces whipping us, calling us by the worst of names. Telling us to taste the punishment of the blazing flame saying, Oh evil soul, come out of the anger and wrath of Allah. So while you're alive, make sure everything you do is fi sabilillah. Constantly remember death and try your best not to get misled. If you could hear what happens in the grave, then you would stop burying your dead. My brothers, you could be here one morning and be gone by the afternoon. That's why we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un.
Right, before I start the next poem, I'd like to quote Hassan ibn Tabith radiallahu anhu. He says, It's not my poetry that honors the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's rather the mention of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that honors my poetry. He's born in the year of the elephant. Even as a child, he was special. It was evident birth of the Prophet mentioned in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 1818, that's your reference. Perfectly proportioned, the most handsome, most elegant. Impeccable character, the most humble and intelligent. Compassionate, considerate in speech, is most eloquent even before he was a prophet. He was a man of great eminence. He's ranked number one in Michael Hart's book, Most Influential. Please refer to the books of Hadith if you need to check his credentials. His message is, worshipping Allah alone is essential and the Quran and his teachings make up all our fundamentals. On the day of judgment, we rely on Allah's mercy and his intercession. His words pose of wisdom teaching us valuable lessons, liberator women's rights. He was against all oppression. The English language cannot do justice. Forgive me for my indiscretions. His face was more radiant than the full moon and his sweat smelled better than the most expensive perfume. The light that shone bright like the sun shines at noon need to follow his example if you want to be al mutakun He came to an illiterate nation at a time of desperation. He was a real revolutionary who ruled by revelation. Seal of the prophets who wish him peace and salutations. We testify as the message of Allah before our daily congregations. When the Arabs worshipped fire and idols, he took them out of Jahiliya. Those were the real dark ages until people started to see it clear. He faced so many hardships, but still he'd persevere. And his dawah is the reason why you see me standing here. Even his enemies knew him as a Sadiq al Amin. They tried to assassinate his character when he spread the message of Tawheed. He invited everybody to Sarat al Mustaqim, but most rejected his message and they didn't take heed. Every step you take was for Allah and his deen. Allah split the moon for the Quraysh, yet they still didn't believe. In fact, they tortured the believers. What a horrid sight it must have been. But imagine the status in Jannah of the earliest Shaheed. They called him a liar, a soothsayer, a madman, and a magician. They couldn't swallow their pride and let go of their traditions, offered him power, wealth and women to stop spreading the religion. But he said, even if you offer me the sun and the moon, I won't accept your proposition. They threw animal intestines on the Prophet while he was in prostration, even stepped on the blessed neck of the best of all creation. But instead of retaliation, he turned to his Lord in supplication, in Allah, ma'asabirin, verily Allah is with the patient. He was boycotted, insulted, treated like an outcast, but through the pain and the struggle, he still remained steadfast. He'd walk through the marketplaces, people used to point fingers and they laughed. People used to throw rubbish on his head every time he'd walk past. And the day that they didn't, he didn't say good riddance and walk on. He went to see if these very same people were inflicted by some harm. These people saw the kindness of the Prophet and eventually they accepted Islam. He's a mercy to mankind, even says in the Quran. Surah al anbiya verse 107, he even led the Anbiya in Salah before he ascended above the heavens. When he went to preach in Taif, yeah, they pelted him with stones. He had blood soaked shoes and he was bruised down to the bone. Jibreel uh, Jibreel descended said, Give me the command. I'll get the angel of mountains to destroy all their homes. But Allah's merciful messenger said, No one let them be. For the land may one day be home to people who believe. I remember these stories in times of difficulty. I remind myself that the Prophet had it much more difficult than me. Even through the slander and the rumor spread by the people of Quraysh, the Ansar came to know about the Prophet's message and his demeanor. They accepted Islam and vowed to keep the Prophet safe. So the message of Allah had migrated to Medina. At that time, it was known as the city of Yathrib. He ended the tribal feuds and led the people with justice. The land of the dates became the real Islamic state. Became an even bigger problem for the people of Quraysh because their caravans to Sham, they were no longer safe yet. The believers had a home. Islam had a base. He was content in every situation. Indeed, it is all Allah's qadr. He even had the help of the angels at the Battle of Badr. He told us to love for ourselves while we love for one another. And SubhanAllah, he referred to you and me as his brothers. I envy the sand that met his blessed feet. It's hard to comprehend how a, mean, how a man could be so humble. He's the perfect example for the likes of you and me even forgave the people that mutilated his uncle. The Sahaba, they became human shields for the Prophet. When he made wudu, they'd be sure to catch every single droplet of water that would flow off his blessed body. The actions proved that they loved him more than anybody. Islam spread from Medina, Muslims multiplied in numbers. The idolaters in Makkah feared that their days were numbered. And when the Prophet returned to Makkah, he could have taken his revenge. 
and the people that used to oppress and torment him, he could have captured everyone and enslaved them. He was in a position of power surrounded by thousands of brave men, but what he did next left the people in amazement. Rahmatullah Lameen, he turned around and forgave them. The best leader, the best father, the best husband, the best person. Imagine you were there and you had to lend an attentive ear and hear that the Messenger of Allah may not be with you the next year. Indeed, the greatest calamities when he departed this dunya. We show our love for the beloved by trying to follow his sunnah. Inshallah, on the day of judgment, we're going to drink from his blessed hand. 21st century role model, he's not your average 7th century man. May Allah reunite us with him in Jannah and save us all from the fire of Jahannam. We love him more than our own selves. Muhammad. Jazakallah.